assalamu alaikum dear students uh, this is the fifth session of the risk hand finger injuries in sports today we will talk about the intersection syndrome uh, first of all why it is known as the intersection syndrome uh, the word intersection that mean that any place uh, or we can say that in area there are two or more things as a street that intersect uh, and we can say that the process of intersecting or meeting two things with each other and crossing each other, that phenomena is known as the intersection. Uh, now, why it is known as intersection? What are those two things which are coming uh, across each other and they are meeting each other um, on the best of which this syndrome is known as uh, the intersection syndrome? Uh, so, this intersection syndrome is basically it's a condition uh, which affects the first and second compartment of the dorsal or wrist extensors. Uh, we discussed previously that the total um, that compartments, there are six in number. And this intersection syndrome, uh, this is basically between uh, the first and second compartments of the uh, dorsal wrist extensor. Uh, this condition is thought to occur as a result of that repetitive friction at the junction in which the tendons of the first dorsal compartment that cross over the second and which uh, that irritation and that crossing over of one um, ex, um, compartment over the another that create uh, uh, uh like and that tenosinovitis of these two crossing side this is known as basically the intersection syndrome uh, so th the two muscles the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor, extensor pollicis brevis which are the abductor and the extensors of the that thumb uh, that cross over that extensor carpi radialis uh, tendons, uh, and these crossing is just proximal to the extensor retinicular. This intersection syndrome uh, that may be due to the friction at the site crossing, and it may be also arise from the tenus and vitus of the two exten extensor tendons within their sinuoid sheath. Uh, we have all, um, already described this tenus and vitus term in detail previously that what actually it is one is tendonitis the other is the tenus and vitus the tendonitis that is the inflammation of the muscle uh, tendon while tenus and vitus is the, basically the inflammation of that sheath uh, which core that tendon so that inflammation is known as the tenus and vitus um, basically if we look at this uh, diagram um, this large circle where the two tendons, which is the first compartment, uh, which are the two muscles of the thumb. This is the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor uh, pollicis brevis. They cross with the second compartment, which have two components that is the extensor carpi radialis longus and the extensor carpi radialis brevis. So basically, this is the site up, and this is actually the rotation and the synovitis which cause that uh, pain and that uh, symptoms. And uh, this is known as actually the intersection syndrome. And uh, the most common symptom, this is the tenderness and that tenderness is found um, dorsally because this condition that is between the extensors and the extensors are um, go through and the dorsal surface towards the fingers and thumb. So the tenderness that is usually found on the dorsal surface and on the uh, radial side with swelling and carpitis a short distance proximal to the uh, site of maximum tenderness in the decubering disease. There is another meeting of uh, two compartments, which is basically uh, the meeting of that second compartment with the third compartment. And that muscle in the third compartment is that extensor lungus of the thumb, that is the extensor policies lungus. Uh, that will be discussed previous uh, in the upcoming slide. Uh, this is actually known as the distal intersection and these two intersections uh, are, but uh, the intersection uh, that is uh, proximal to the extensor retinaculum while the distal intersection that is at the site of the uh, distal, uh, the site of that uh, um, on the extensor retinaculum. This uh, intersection syndrome, this is also proximal to that um, uh, site where the tenderness in the decubering disease is. If we look at the uh, next uh, slide on the picture is, so 
so here we can see uh, the difference between the sites of that pen with because of the uh, the decurvan syndrome and the area of pen because of that uh, the distal intersection syndrome. Uh, basically, uh, this decurvan syndrome is also a tenus synovitis as well. Uh, but if we look at uh, this area, the decurvan syndrome is much distal than this intersection syndrome. As uh, if we look at here, uh, the here the pen with the cast of the decubitus syndrome is here. Be, that is the uh, tenus varietas of the first compartment, while the intersection that is the uh, um, tenus varietas of the second compartment, as well as it may be because of the uh, first compartment. So the site of pen and mechanism intersection syndrome that we uh, have discussed uh, that in the previous slide. The causes of intersection syndrome uh, that include uh, basically inflammation at the site where the that abductor and the extensor muscles of the thumb, uh, they cross with the other extensors of the wrist, uh, which are the extensor carpi radialis brevis and both the extensor carpi radialis longus. And here, a tenus oritis may be produced, and this may give that pain as well as tenderness on the uh, that radial site. The exact uh, the site of that um, uh, intersection syndrome uh, is on the radial site, and this is actually almost uh, four to six centimeter proximal to that uh, list of tubercle, uh, that which is a tubercle on the dorsal surface of that uh, distal end of the radius. So this is almost uh, uh, four to six cent uh, centimeter just uh, proximal to that list of tubercle. So these are some extra articular causes of the pen around the wrist uh, in which we um, have this intersection syndrome. And the next one is that uh, the Dupurian disease, which is actually that tenus synovitis of the that two tendons. This is that distal intersection. Um, in the previous intersection, we discussed that it is actually the meeting of the two compartments, the first and the second compartment. But here, this distal uh, inter intersection compartment, this is the meeting of the second and the third compartment. Uh, and the third compartment, which is actually the uh, ex long extensor of that thumb, which is the extensor pollicis longus, and the two uh, extensor of the rest, is, uh, which is the extensor um, carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis, they meet. So there again, the same phenomena where the stenus on the vertex is created and because of that friction inflammation may be produced, uh, created there which is actually known as the distal intersection syndrome. Uh, this condition, uh, sometimes it's known as the horseman wrist. Uh, horseman is that person uh, which uh, operate the horse in a boat. And as it is very common in those horsemen because of their repetitive uh, wrist movement while they are um, operating their horse of that boat, so that's why this condition is also known as the horse uh, man wrist. This uh, intersection syndrome has been termed with, uh, with uh, numerous other terminologies with which will be we have listed and summarized in the next slide as well. So this condition, the horse man wrist, that is because of its, um, uh, as we discussed, common occurrence in the horse, but it is also seen in the uh, canist as well. Uh, that is a type of um, boat which is have two sharp uh, angles, we can say that sharp ends at both sides, and it is a long, uh, which can be operated by two, three, or many uh, team members as well. That is a sports as well, which is known as, uh, and the person who operate that it is actually known as the canist. So, and as well as it is uh, common in the vet training and the record sport as well. If we look at the mechanism which is being there in the vet training and as the record sport like badminton, uh, like squash, like tennis, uh, and the table tennis, uh, there is a repetitive radial deviation, under deviation uh, during their uh, forehand shot, there is the backhand shot. And during these, there may be uh, the, that um, condition, this is the Osman uh, risk may, may be uh, produced. So uh, 
horseman is the because it's most common in the horseman but it doesn't mean that it is only present in those persons the treatment of this condition that uh, actually involve wrist um, and early in, uh, intervention with the corticosteroid injection into the bursa if there is no response with the conservative treatment so that should be treated with the uh, rice or rice as well and then if there is no such response then the last option is that is the corticosteroid injection uh, for rose other consideration could uh, to reduce uh, the intensity of growing as well as to decrease uh, the size of the or or change the size of the or rolling technique uh, um, according to the condition which will not um, make and which will not make them prone towards such osman first the others names terminologies which can um, which, which are used in the literature for this intersection syndrome this is the peritendinitis uh, crepitans this is the crossover syndrome subcutaneous spermatocytes the ski speaker's wrist the gable for um, and the adventitial bursitis as well as the apl syndrome the next uh, pathology which uh, uh, can cause that uh, uh, subacute or chronic uh, wrist pain uh, these are the ganglions so ganglions they usually occur uh, in any age in any stage of the uh, teeth life uh, and they are actually a synovial cyst uh, Uh, which can be getting with the giant space there. They, they most often present it are relatively painless swelling. Uh, they occur in a several common sites on both the dorsal and all the respects of the wrist, but most commonly the uh, area which is surrounding that scapular net space. Um, and sometimes it may be um, as considered as a result and consequence of the uh, ligamentous trauma in the, uh, in the posture. they may also be intercapsular or sometimes may be interosseous as well these ganglions so this is actually uh, the diagram is showing that a ganglion uh, the which is present in the surround in the area between that uh, lunate and the uh, scaphoid scapulonate joint space uh, the patient main complaint of this uh, um, ganglion is actually a uh, intermittent wrist pain which uh, just come and go and that is an, an abnormal movement of the wrist the spinning may be um, present that may be not present but if it is present it may be uh, visible intermittently or not it also should not be relied upon to make the diagnosis at sometimes in during this condition there may be no such spinning uh, and sometimes if there is maybe spinning that doesn't mean that it will it will assure that there is some ganglion or cyst ultrasonography is a uh, useful and very uh, accurate investigation but uh, instead of that ultrasonography the titubated mri highlight ganglion cyst uh, very much and very clearly very explicitly uh, and that's why it is the um, that chase of investigation for the diagnosis and uh, identifying of these cyst uh the athlete that must be reassured that the ganglion is uh, benign so this is actually a uh, mri uh, which shows the bilobed high signal ganglion which indicating that uh, this is equally bilobed this is the one lobe this is the another lobe so this is that um, bilobed and high signal ganglion um, surrounding the tendon of that uh, flexor carpi radialis which is a breaking curve um, and very close to the patient site of pain uh, so that uh, that's why it, as it is appearing as very really clearly and it give us very explicit uh, result and very really, uh, clear result about the presence of that cell and that's why the mri is the choice of investigation for the assessment and diagnosis of this ganglion cyst treatment uh, that is only indicated um, um for a patient for a teeth who have some symptoms if he is asymptomatic so there may be no such uh, requirement of the treatment uh when the system they persist um, for a long time uh or when such uh, symptoms they are not giving uh, good response uh, to the conservative treatment then the aspiration of the corticosteroid infiltration uh, that may be uh, given and there uh the main problem is that they are temporarily effective 
Um, and this can be performed under the ultrasound gun is very feasible just to make it uh, clear and it just to make it exactly on the place where it should, they should be. So some persistent symptomatic gliomas uh, they require surgery, but that is uh, very less common. And uh, without complete removal, the lesion returns rapidly. So there is a recurrence and there is a, a becoming again uh, appearance of the cyst as well. If there is uh, some residual present and some um, you know, gliom that may be present, if it is not removed completely, so it may be repeated and it may come again. The next uh, pathology which uh, may cause that uh, acute or uh, the chronic risk pain, these are the different uh, in impairment syndromes. So that may be described in infection syndrome or other. So collectively, they all are known as the impairment uh, syndrome. Uh, so first of all, the skipoid infection syndrome. Uh, this uh, infection syndrome, they may occur uh, because of that repeated to hyperextension stresses and such stresses, they are very common in the weight lifting uh, when they are going to uh, lift some heavy weight as well as in the uh, gymnastic because in the gymnastic when they are using some um, uh, hanging from a stick or they, when they are moving, doing their, their different activities, so they may uh, have some hyperextension of the wrist and that hyperextension is actually the mechanism of injury for the stupid infection syndrome. This mechanism is also responsible for that avascular necrosis of the capitate uh, and ventricular as well. Uh, patients typically present with the pain and as well as weakness, and the pain is mostly on the dorsal, and that um, is very really intense when the threat of the patient then uh, do uh, wrist extension. And that's why when this um, uh, syndrome is present, usually the threats they will not continue their training, they will not continue their activities properly because when, whenever they extend their wrist, that will give a sharp intense pain on the uh, dorsal aspect. And uh, beside this pain and weakness, there will be also tenderness on the palpation over the dorsal aspect of the uh, skipite. So basically, this is the mechanism of injury uh, in which there is hyperextension um, in the gymnasts and the weightlifters. And during that hyperextension, as we can see in this picture, uh, that there is infection uh, that is skipoid, uh, and that may give pain in the dorsal, and that is very really tender when the skipoid is being palpated on the uh, dorsal side. So the, this is the area which will be painful and which is uh, that area of the, that pain during this skipoid infection uh, syndrome. In infection of the dorsal pole of the lunette uh, and the distal radius is seen in uh, gymnast. And this is another um, in that infection syndrome. Uh, uh, and during this uh, condition, the extensor pollicis lungus, they may impinge on that uh, tubercle on the uh, dorsal surface of that distal radius, which is known as the listed tubercle. Um, and you sometimes this tendon, the extensor pollicis lungus, uh, during this impingement, uh, there also there is rupturing of this as well. Uh, the trichotry hemat impingement syndrome they may result from the forced wrist extension and the under uh, deviation. So it should be clear to you that whenever the mechanism of injury of that impingement of the uh, trichotry hemat is uh, uh, wrist plus when there is under deviation. Uh, and this is that's why this is very common among the record sports because specifically in the table tennis and the, the tennis, because when they are playing uh, the backhand and the forehand, so they are basically giving that uh, repeatedly performing that reading under deviation, uh, and as well as during uh, the backhand shot, usually they are in the uh, radial and the under deviation uh, and as well as they have some extension as well in there. So this impingement uh, that is uh, much common in the gymnast as well as in the record sports as well. And the mechanism of injury for the trichotry hemat impingement is uh, extension of the wrist plus the under deviation. 
This is that uh, listed tubercle, which is present on the dorsal surface of the distal radius. This is ulna. And this is that extensor pollicis longa tendon, uh, which actually in, in some impinge here and sometimes it may be uh, ruptured as well, but that uh, is really less common. This is that uh, listed tubercle. This is the dorsal surface. This is the end of the distal ridges. So these are the those different uh, carpal bones, uh, and which uh, may, if there is any problem, so there may be some uh, infection of these carpal bones, which will cause pain on the mostly on the dorsal surface. The radiostylide impaction uh, that can result from the repeated uh, forced radial deviation, specifically among golfers. Uh, so ulnar deviation that uh, we discussed at that. Uh, Tripetry hemat and the wrist ex extension that was occupied. And here, the radial stellate infection that is because of that uh, radial deviation. Patients with these, uh, this radial stellate infection may present with the localized tenderness uh, over near the distal end of that uh, uh, radius. And they are treated with the price of simple the rice plus. They can also have some breast uh, for it, which will protect, which will prevent its for the injury and for the damage. Um, very rarely, uh, the cardiac steroid injection is needed or surgical because um, to, to that protective breast and the rice and that was uh, that you would go, go, uh, have good prognosis in the diabetes steroid infection syndrome. Some tendinopathies around the wrist, uh, which can cause the wrist pain. Uh, any of the flicks that are extensive tendon around the wrist may become a painful with excessive activity. On examination, there is tenderness, and sometimes uh, there is uh, uh, some uh, repetitive as well as well as some swelling. The principles uh, of treating of these tendinopathies uh, that um, apply that having that consist of uh, management should include attention to the biomechanics, uh, which means to change the position, to change the posture, and to change the different uh, mechanism, uh, which will make less prone uh, towards these injuries. So that is to change the different uh, uh, sporting activities, different techniques, uh, which will, uh, will make these athletes less prone towards these injuries. So that is the ergonomics. Uh, that is the rice, which is the rest um, and the uh, ice. And some strengthening and functional rehabilitation as well to these tenders which are involved. Now the articular causes of the subacute and chronic rest pain. These are the uh, injuries to the distal radial epiphysis, that is triangular fibrocartilage complex tears and uh, Kinbock disease. Uh, the previous pathologies we, we, we discussed, uh, that was impingement syndrome, their impaction syndrome, intersection syndrome, decubering syndrome, all these were the extra articular causes of the subacute of the chronic risk pain. And these three, the distal radial epiphysis injury are in that fracture. And uh, that uh, TFCC, which is a cute triangular fibrocartilage complex tear, uh, and the Kinbog disease, which is actually that ischemic uh, condition of that unit. So these all are the articular causes of the uh, chronic wrist pain. So first of all, uh, injury to the distal uh, radial epiphysis, uh, which is a very common uh, injury in the elite young gymnast when they are in the developmental stage. Uh, the fracture, they may occur, but over injury to the epiphysis is more common. Uh, and that's why uh, the, here it is the injury, uh, what is used instead of that fracture. Uh, the gymnast, uh, the athlete, they complain of the pain and as well as some limitation of the dorsal friction. Uh, examination revealed minimum swelling, and sometimes there may be uh, no such swelling. Uh, and if it is present, there will be a very less swelling. And as well as the tenderness about the distal root epiphysis uh, with no sign of tendinopathy or no sign of the synovial cyst or the joint dysfunction. So this is actually uh, the image of that hand which is showing uh, injury to the distal or uh, radial uh, epiphysis. Here we can see uh, the fracture is being a dislocation of the uh, distal end um, over the that distal to the epiphysis. This is that uh, end of the uh, distal radius. And here we can see this is the boundary. And here that uh, and density and magnitude of displacement. 
as we can see also here on this uh, letter domain, this is the uh, PA cloud, while this one is um, a letter image. Some uh, common bibliographic findings include the wording of that growth plate, uh, the cystic changes, and as well as the haziness in the normal uh, radiolucent areas of that epiphyseal plate uh, when compared with the uh, asymptomatic site. The haziness actually, it means um, uh, some quality of being foggy, or we can say that cloudy appearance on that radiograph. Uh, if there is narrowing of the growth plate, uh, then it may be uh, the last uh, type, or we can say the last, uh, which is the um, type five, according to the Salton Harris classification, which will which we are, will discuss in the upcoming slide. Uh, so this, if there is narrowing of this growth plate on the radiograph, which indicate that this is the uh, type five of the Salter Harris uh, injury to the uh, distal radius epiphysis. There should be particular attention to the strengthening of that four max flexures as incorrect red wearing to an excessively extended wrist is a major etiology for such uh, condition. So this is that classification of that uh, Salter Harris uh, of that injury to the distal radial epiphysis. And on the extreme left, you can see this is the normal. This is the type one. When uh, it is uh, across uh, just parallel to the epiphysis, the injury is uh, parallel, uh, parallel to the uh, that uh, epiphysis. Uh, that is the type one. When the injury to the is a bow, or we can say that uh, it is proximal to the epiphysis, then it will be known as the type two. Uh, when the injury is uh, mostly below, or we can say distal to the epiphysis, that will be type three. When the combination of the type two and three both are present, the injury uh, to the distal radius is present, uh, both uh, that is distal to the epiphysis as well as um, proximal to the epiphysis, then it will be terms as and considered as the type four. The next, which we discussed in the previous slide, that when there is narrowing uh, that um, epiphysis and the radiograph that indicate that type five. Uh, so we can also uh, memorize these with the that salter in which the S means straight across A mean above the uh, epiphysis, uh, that L mean uh, lower or below uh, that epiphysis, uh, and T mean two, which means the combination of these one and two, uh, and also mean through, which means throughout that uh, above, above and below the epiphysis. And that is the erasure of the growth plate, or simply the crush of that growth plate. So this is the classification of that uh, injury to the distal or radius epiphysis, uh, according to that Salter Harris classification. The next, which uh, can cause uh, the the next articular cause, which can cause the chronic wrist pain, uh, as well as the subacute pain. This is the triangular of fibrocartilage complex tear. Why it is known as complex? Because it is um, consists of a number of structures, uh, like it consists of the triangular fibrocartilage as well as the ulnar meniscus homologue and the ulnar collateral ligament and other numerous um, ligaments with between uh, the different carpal bones as well as the extensive carpal ulnar tendon sheath. This uh, triangular fibrocartilage complex uh, that lies between the ulna and the corpus. Uh, this is on the other side. This uh, TFCC, the fibrocartilage, triangular fibrocartilage complex, this is one of that main stabilizers of the distal radio ulnar joint. This is the anatomy of the that triangular fibrocartilage complex. We can see here, uh, this is that uh, triangular disc. These are the two ligaments, which are the palmar, um, distal uh, radio ulnar ligament. Uh, this is the ulnar lunate ligament, which is between the ulna and the, so this is lunate. So the ligament, which uh, is between that ulna and uh, lunate, this is known as the ulnar uh, lunate ligament. So many of these are uh, the ligaments, which are between the lunate, and this is the radial, distal radial head. So uh, this is the, the short radio lunate ligament, uh, and these are the um, ligam, ligament 
which is between the triquetrum of the frog um, uh, as well and the, between the ulna. So this is that ulna triquet ligament. This is the ligament which is between the two carpal bones and that's why it is known as the interosseous ligament uh, or more specifically the lunar triquet or interosseous uh, ligament. Uh, this is uh, the ligament which is from the ulnar bone and it then connect with the carpal bone of the distal row which is the capitate and there it is the ulno capitate uh, ligament. This is that sheet uh, which covering the extensive carpi ulnaris. So all these uh, different ligaments, uh, disc uh, structures, these are combinedly known as the uh, triangular fibrocartilage complex. This condition, this is uh, one of the most common site of the wrist pain on the ulnar side, uh, and compulsive load to the wrist is specifically accompanied by the ulnar deviation. Uh, for example, in athletes involved in the gymnastic, uh, in the diving, in the golf, and the uh, different uh, record sports. In these conditions, uh, during when there is a ulnar uh, deviation uh, along with that complete load on the wrist, so this load may prone this person toward that tear to the central portion of the cartilage. Uh, this can also be disrupted after a distal radial ulnar fracture or potential with disruption to the distal radial ulnar band. So uh, the etiology may be uh, among these three uh, different uh, factors. Examination, um, the APE reveals tenderness and swelling over the dorsal ulnar aspect of the wrist, as well as pain on the resistant ulnar dorsal flexion and the ulnar deviation. Uh, Besides this, sometimes we also hear a clicking uh, a sensation as well, uh, and, and different on the wrist movement, specifically the um, dorsal flexion and ulnar deviation. There may be some muscle weakness uh, and the pain that it may have uh, some reduced strength in the gripping. The press test that is really helpful and actually it is used uh, in the diagnosis of that uh, uh, triangular fibrocartilage uh, complex tear. Uh, we have discussed uh, this press test uh, in previous in detail and make the patient uh, try to evaluate uh, his or her body of the chair uh, while he will actually just take support of the three hands and the uh, both borders of the seat of the chair. The patient create an axial ulnar load by attempting to lift his or her weight uh, off a chair using the affected wrist. A positive test replicate the presence of this uh, triangular finger cartilage complex tear. Uh, the MRI can image the TFCC, and this is um, the, nowadays the most popular investigation uh, for uh, all the ulnar side of wrist pain. Uh, MRI, this is considered as the gold standard for that uh, different uh, musculoskeletal injuries, specifically the tendon and uh, ligament, which are the soft tissue injuries. Uh, as the CT scan, they can be used uh, and very effective and more accurate uh, as compared to radiograph for the fractures and the subluxation. Uh, but uh, the CT scan they may not be useful as the MRI is for the soft tissue injuries. And that's why as compared to the CT scan, MRI is uh, very uh, popular nowadays for the, uh, for the diagnosis of the different uh, musculoskeletal condition. Another more thing, um, the MRI, they also don't uh, use that mechanism of the X-rays, the bombardment of the X-rays. Uh, so again, there is no such risk of, uh, um, of this exposure to the X-rays as it is in the uh, CT scan. Uh, estim estimation of the sensitivity and specificity of this uh, MRI, this is 60% uh, uh, sensitivity and 90% specificity. And that is the reason uh, we can say that uh, MRI, uh, they should not be used for the rolling out of this condition. As we, we know that for the sensitivity, we have that rule of the snout in which we, there is the uh, negative, negative uh, high sensitive test is when negative, you will rule out the uh, disease. But now this have very low sensitivity, that is 60%. So whenever there is normal appearance on the MR, uh, we can't say there, uh, there is no such uh, TFCCT because it is uh, less sensitive. 
if it is 90 plus uh, sensitive then it will make uh, uh, sure that uh, during a negative uh, in the lacking of the that uh, those features on the mr uh, when they are not present uh, then we can say that there is no TSPCT, but as uh, it is uh, less sensitive, so we can't use, and they should not be used to rule out the condition uh, if there is some clinical symptoms, and but there is no such appearance on the MR. Interestingly, ultrasonography, uh, according to a study that shows promise for the matching MR and the detection of the TFCC lesion. So it is as uh, sensitive and specific as the MR is. Uh, but the problem with the ultrasonography, that is, it is dependent on the expert uh, opinion. And that's why in the interpretation of that uh, ultrasonography that may be different among different uh, experts. And this is one of the topic of this uh, technique. Treatments of the TFCC tier, they may include uh, bracing uh, as well as tending to the uh, different uh, muscles. Um, heat and electrotherapy modalities, they can be also used to reduce the intensity of the pain. Similarly, arthroscopy, they permits accurate diagnosis and excision of any turn cartilage required. Uh, and this is the most accurate and the most precise uh, uh, imaging, the arthroscopy um, as compared to the other we discussed previously. Uh, if the ulna is longer, then the radius, which is um, and considered as a positive unawareness, it impinges on the triangular fibrocartilage uh, and it may cause that tearing of this uh, fibrocartilage. So it may be necessary to shorten the ulna as well as accessing that uh, the tongue of fibrocartilage. The next, which is uh, the distal radio ulnar joint instability. Uh, actually, this is the subluxation of the ulnar head occur because of uh, that evolution of the dorsal and oral ligament which are the part of that uh, present on the odorsal and other uh, aspects of the uh, triangular fibrocartilage complex. Um, these are the two ligaments. These, these are the um, radio one ligament and they can be divided into two. Uh, that is the deep and the uh, superficial. So it is very really much clear in this diagram. And this, these both, which is on the extreme, these are the uh, superficial dorsal and ulnar radio ulnar uh, ligament, while the two, which is innermost to these extreme, the one they are the deep dorsal and the ulnar uh, radio uh, ulnar ligament. As these ligaments, they are connecting um, and uh, supporting and giving stability to the radio ulnar chain, so they are present on the both sides of the radius and ulnar. A dorsal subluxation of the ulnar head uh, is more common, and this is uh, is situated with the tear of that ulnar uh, radio ulnar ligament. Uh, when uh, there is, if there is a uh, moment when there is subluxation of that uh, uh, ulna on the dorsal surface, obviously it will uh, have a stretch to the ulnar ligament, and sometimes it may be. Uh, tear as well. So, uh, so it, this subluxation of the ulnar head dorsally that is situated with the tear of the ulnar radio uh, ulnar ligament and it's more common and may be due to the repetitive or forceful pronation in contact sports uh, and the tennis or other uh, gymnastic activities. The dorsal displacement of the ulnar stellate process during pronation may be detected on the two lateral radiograph. Um, the treatment requires repair of the surgical uh, repair of the uh, TFCs. So this is ulnar collateral ligament and these two are the superficial dorsal and ulnar uh, ligament. Um, while this one, these are the deep dorsal and the ulnar ligament. The, the third disease uh, which we um, have enlisted there, uh, which can cause the chronic or the subacute wrist pain, this is the uh, Kimbock disease. Uh, it is actually the ischemic necrosis, or we can say that the edge here necrosis of the lineage. Uh, and this Kimbock disease is basically a proceeding, this is um, possibly because of the repeated trauma. This can present as chronic dorsal or ulnar wrist pain in a feet who has repeated impact uh, to the wrist. 
it is most common in those uh, in aged in the, which are in the age of their twenties uh, from twenty one to twenty nine thirty. During this involved disease, uh, there is a short lo and localized tenderness when there is palpation on the uh, lunate, and there may be some muscle weakness, and the person, the patient or the athlete may have uh, some loss of the grip strength as well. Um, if it is in the acute stage, uh, then the immobilization may be very effective, but if it is in the chronic cases, then it may need uh, surgery and it may not give any response to the conservative options. Uh, although uh, the surgical treatment, the surgical outcomes, they are not superior to the conservative management, but sometimes these conservative management, they are responseless. Uh, so then the next option is obviously that surgical treatment. Numbness and uh, the tingling in the and hand um, that may be present in the hand along with the pain. And another type of clinical presentation is that it characterizes of the paresthesia or the numbness. And these may be because of the two uh, common problems, which is maybe a dolus they are the carpal tunnel syndrome and the ulnar nerve compression or the ulnar nerve syndrome. So, first of all, we will discuss the carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, during the carpal tunnel syndrome, which is equally the pathology of the median nerve, that median nerve may be compressed as it passes through the carpal tunnel along with the other flexor digitorum profundus, flexor digitorum superficialis, and the uh, flexor pollicis lungum tendons. So this uh, um, median nerve that passes in that flexor in lucum along with these uh, nine tendons so this condition is characterized by a burning ulnar wristband with the numbness and paresthesia in the distribution of that median nerve, which is actually the complete thumb, uh, that uh, ulnar surface of the index finger, uh, the middle finger, and the radial side of the uh, ring finger as well. Uh, the nocturnal paresthesia and the night pain, uh, they are the characteristic of the carpal tunnel syndrome. We discussed in the history in the previous session as well, that if that tooth that is complaining of the night pain uh, in the wrist, so there is a suspicion suspicion of that uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. So this is the that view of that uh, carpal tunnel uh, where we can have this uh, uh, different carpal bone, the triquetrum, the net, uh, and this is the uh, skipite. So this is that uh, radial side. This is the skipite lunate uh, triquetrum. Uh, and these are the uh, this is the PC form, and these are those uh, tendons which are uh, nine in number. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and these are being um, uh, arranged in three lines. And here, this is the median nerve which is passing through inside that flexor retinicular. Again, a very clear image of this uh, of these uh, tendons. Here we can see uh, that uh, the two tendons uh, they both they are the uh, flexor digitorum superficialis tendon, and the next two are again the flexor digitorum superficialis tendon, and the four tendons in the below row they are the flexor digitorum profundus tendons, and the ninth one this is the flexor uh, policies longus tendon, which is a flexor for the uh, thumb. So these nine tendons, along with uh, some uh, fat and some um, viscous, as well as the median nerve, they are present inside that uh, flexor retinicular. So now, whenever there is compression of this median nerve inside that flexor retinicular, because of, of any reason, there will be the pain and symptoms which we discussed in the uh, previous slides. So these are the area pen where, uh, which is blue in color, uh, which may be uh, to, to because of the compression of that median nerve. The pen can radiate to, to the forearm, elbow, and shoulder. Um, it can be diagnosed um, through, through the tendon sign, and tendon sign will be positive when uh, there is tapping on that uh, over the median nerve, which will uh, and can increase the tingling and numbness uh, in the areas which are supplied by the major nerve. 
the most important aspects and the diagnosis they are the history and the physical examination but now conducting studies and they can also confirm the diagnosis and may predict how the patient will respond to surgery this is the extreme cases in the last stages um, of the uh, carpal tunnel syndrome in which uh, secondary changes which may be occur which are secondary to this uh, carpal tunnel syndrome this is the uh, wasting and atrophy of the thinar muscles and the last stage of the carpal tunnel syndrome the patient will have that reduced eminence of that thinar muscle as we can see here clearly in the both hands of uh, the images and the two air uh, the blue arrows they are pointing to their areas where there is atrophy and muscle wasting of these thinar muscles uh mild cases that be treated with uh, different uh, uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs as well as with this different splinting and bracing uh, a single corticosteroid injection may provide relief uh, but persistent cases uh, they may be treated effectively with only the surgical treatment uh surgery may be either open or it may be uh, endoscopic and systematic reviews to that show no difference between the two techniques for the symptom or relief so they both have to be equally effective for the treatment of this carpal tunnel syndrome the next condition uh, of that uh, which causing the numbness and tingling and pain in the hand uh, which is related to the wrist this is the ulnar compression uh the ulnar nerve is present outside uh, that flexor reticulum uh, and it's present in a separate tunnel and separate canal which is known as the gion canal so the ulnar nerve that may be compressed at the wrist as it passes through that uh, gion canal uh, this injury is most commonly seen in cyclist uh, due to that supporting body weight over a long duration all uh, right because of that poor bike fit or failure to use several relaxed um, that handle bar grip positions it also occurs in uh, athletes uh, which are involved in the different martial arts in the karate uh, and a very recent study uh, that highlighted the risk of hand new vascular changes in the base ball player as well specifically those who are the catcher because of that repeated trauma is associated with the uh, catching a ball uh, so they may have a high risk for uh, this condition which is the and treatment of this uh, compression of this under nerve in the gion canal so this is uh, that uh, canal which is known as the gion canal here this is the yellow color this is that uh, under nerve and the tingling and numbness which will be because of the um, that gion canal syndrome or we can say that the under nerve syndrome uh, that is uh, the compression of the ulnar nerve they will be uh, paresthesia in this area which is been color as yellow in this uh, diagram on the right side so this is the mechanism of that uh, uh, compression of the ulnar nerve inside that gion canal um, when there is there is a drop down handle bar held in lower position for a very long time and then it may create uh, the um, compression of this ulnar nerve in that gion canal uh, here is the uh, that area of the ulnar nerve sensor innervation um, the ulnar nerve that is being branched to uh, the one which is been on the palmar uh, palmar area palm area this is actually the motor uh, branch of the ulnar nerve uh, while the nerve which is going through the uh, pinky and as well as on the lip uh, on the half side of that uh, ring finger this is the sensory branch of the uh, ulnar nerve so ulnar nerve uh, from here it is divided into the motor uh, branch as well as the sensory branch but that repetitive trauma and that um, persistent um, uh, conditions which is that drop down handle bar held um, holding for very long term in the lower position uh, that may be the mechanism and maybe the etiology of for that compression of on on nerve within the gion canal uh, this nerve lies with the ulnar artery between the uh, fusiform bone on the ulnar side of the metrally you can see here uh, this is that uh, artery uh, symptoms include that pain and paresthesia to the little finger uh, pinky 
and the ulnar sites are that half side of the fourth finger, which is actually the uh, known as the ring finger. Uh, weakness they usually develop later in the last stages uh, conservative treatment involves splinting uh, in sets and changes in the cyclist grip on the handlebars as well. Surgical exploration of the Guillaume's kingdom that may be required, but that is less common uh, as the, it has been a um, good response to that, changing the technique of cycling or the seizing of that uh, cycling sport, as well as use of that in surgical splinting. The last stages of the um, entrapment of the ulnar nerve that may um, show uh, some resting of the muscles and where it has been uh, the black arrow is pointing to that area where there may be some uh, air trophy just because of that ulnar nerve entrapment at the rest in the when it is passing through the Guion canal. Uh, the hand and finger injuries uh, that will be discussed in the uh, next session. So that was all about uh, uh, all these uh, uh, five sessions that have been in, you know, dis dis discussed the wrist injuries, which are acute uh, wrist injuries, the subacute and the chronic wrist injuries. And the next uh, session we will discuss, uh, we will talk about the different injuries in the sports which are occurring in the hand and and I think thank you so much.